I'm a professor of radiotherapy and oncology. I'm from Nigeria. I will start with Mark. Mark has done very, very well. I was in Germany last year with him. And I'm very impressed with what they have done so far. But about screening, about 300,000 or 30,000 or 3,000 people, screening is OK. There's nothing wrong with screening. But in the recent past, when we said we wanted to screen women for cancer of the breast, even the WHO said, if you screen in Africa and you get the women a mask, we are the facilities. We are the men, the trained men to treat this patient. So it is one thing to screen. It is another thing to manage. So if you screen and these patients are got in, will you assist in managing them? So uh, screening from our side, especially when it comes to, to diabetes, is one element of a larger capacity, uh, capacity advancement uh, program. We see that while the focus uh, in Africa has been very much on uh, on infectious disease, and we need to continue to we need, we need to continue our efforts to combat malaria and HIV and tuberculosis and the neglected uh, neglected tropical diseases, and we need to learn the right lessons out of the uh, Ebola uh, pandemic and to be prepared. But we see that there is this tremendous shift toward non non communicable diseases, and we see that the African medical community uh, has a need. To, to enhance their, their knowledge, their, their, their expertise, uh, and their engagement in these, uh, in these areas. And that's, that's what's behind the capacity advancement uh, program. So we don't expect that this will solve the entire problem, but we think that, that a, screening, uh, a screening effort is, uh, uh, is, is very important. When it comes to cancer care in Africa, we all know that, um, that the, the quality the quality of care is simply uh, not good enough, and that is uh, and that is a euphemism. Uh, we, we all know that. Uh, we see that in rural communities, people don't even have access to the most basic palliative care. We see progress in uh, in some areas, but there is a tremendous need uh, uh, to do more. I've been talking. Uh, I was at the UN General Assembly uh, recently, where where I could uh, where I had the opportunity to talk about. Uh, public-private partnerships in uh, in this uh, in this context, and people uh, uh, and the the world's experts say that it, for, to get started in Africa, we need to set up tertiary uh, tertiary care centers. There is hardly anything available in Africa, and we would need as a first step, we would need need, need something like 50 tertiary care centers. The, but this is not just a the, uh, uh, about the availability of drugs. We need such centers to be equipped with medical oncologists, we need pathologists there, uh, and we need surgeons, we need uh, trained surgeons, and very important, we need radiotherapy. So we need to have a holistic approach and we need to put many stakeholders uh, together to, uh, to achieve progress. We as a company and we as an industry, we are, uh, we are, we are ready uh, to contribute to this, but we need other partners uh, to uh, to join in, uh, one one aspect about the uh, about Uganda, uh, we are very active in uh, in Uganda. One of our colleagues is actually uh, traveling to Uganda uh, this uh, this week, and we've been there many times. We have a close uh, collaboration with Makerere University, and uh, and the three hundred thousand. Uh, uh, number was a number for Africa, not for uh, not for uh, for Kenya alone. And this is again we're rolling this up in a uh, in a first step. I've made the experience in the fight against schistosomiasis. Um, my uh, 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 colleague Karl Ludwig was talking about this. Uh, five years ago, we were able to only distribute 10 million tablets a year, together with w, uh, to w, with WHO. Uh, last year, we've been in the range of, or this year, we'll be in the range of about 170 million tablets. Next year, we will be approaching 200 to 250 million tablets. So we want to, to change things overnight, and as we know that people are suffering, we need to, we need to be aware that, that we need to have a realistic ramp-up strategy uh, of such exercises. Thank Absolutely. you. Thank you, Dr. Clay.
a lot of the cancers in Kenya present at a very, very late stage, so that makes the morbidities very, very, uh, very, very high. Uh, if I could just add probably uh, one of the things that um, yeah, the government has done uh, through um, uh, James Macharia was to, is investing uh, half a billion dollars in buying uh, medical equipment and uh, not diagnostic equipment. Uh, granted that uh, um, the, we don't have a sufficient number of medical personnel, and I think the Vice Chairman has just talked about that, but the recent initiative that Mark and um, uh, the Ministry of Health and Kenyatta National Hospital established of telemedicine, where uh, uh, the, the, uh, uh, we can get consul consultations uh, through uh, electronic uh, uh, means enhances uh, access and uh, enhances information and enhances uh, knowledge. We know very well that um, after the Hiroshima bomb, the, uh, the Japanese just didn't sit back. I mean, they started screening from door to door, house to house, and that shows increased the, 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 the level of interventions. So yes, the fact that we might not do everything about it, uh, but it's important that uh, it's better you deal with uh, what you know. Well done. Well, I see us, you have anything to add? Yes, um, I think uh, one of the things which I should uh, like to emphasize is that uh, because we are very short in terms of uh, specialists, we have to have um, a scheme where we share the service. Um, for example, if you are to set up a center of excellence in every county, it would not be possible, you know, both in terms of the personnel, but also in terms of the cost. So the kind of model which you want to adopt here is to say you can have basic screening facilities in very, every hospital. However, if you want sophisticated uh, radiology equipment, that can only be done through centers of excellence, which can be dotted across the country. Initially here in this country, we are starting with five. One in Nairobi, one Mobasa, Nyeri, Eldoret, and Kisumu. That way then you can share the few oncologists who you have in the public sector. You can use the concept of telemedicine in terms of sharing of data between you know, hospitals. And I must say we started, I think, some video um, sort of process of sharing of uh, expertise through a scheme which was sponsored by Mark at Kenyatta National Hospital, whereby video, if you like, messaging was done between Nairobi and Machakos. This is the kind of thing which you need to encourage because in Africa we are short of finances, we are short of personnel, and so we have to really leverage on the few people who we have through this kind of technological advancement. Thank you, Dr. When shall we see Mark actively in Uganda. I would love to see that. I would love to see a conference like this in Uganda. Well done. We have um, a fertility journalist group that we've started. We would like to see more of that. We're very committed. I am very impressed by um, the members of parliament here. I don't know if they call them that. Governors. We would like to see this kind of thing smear off to well us done. in Uganda. So, um, I would just like to see some commitment here. When shall we see Mark this <laughs> active in well Uganda? Done. Thank you. Well done, well done. The Luminary is a series of actions, and the actions are all over Africa, and so is our commitment. Our commitment covers all of Africa and is spreading from the work streams, from the events, from the decisions, uh, from the actions we take. The Luminary event itself, this is really the first time in Africa and Kenya and the commitment of the Kenyan authorities, the close cooperation and private partnership which we could build here um, over the years um, made this event possible and therefore we decided for Nairobi as the starting event. The next event, now I make a commitment, and Russia you may excuse me, 2016 will also be held in Africa, 2017 will be held in Africa, for 2018, we should think twice because this is 350 years mark, and there maybe it makes sense to have it back in Germany once again. And now we have to define the place and define the location, and we will do this. Uganda certainly one of the candidates as we go forward. Well done. 
how does this private public partnership um, offer relief to poor patients in Kenya, especially who are suffering or struggling with NCDs? And what does it really mean when a patient misses a dose because they can't afford? I think the biggest challenge, like I said during my address, is uh, the cost of treating NCDs is beyond the reach of most monanchi or most ordinary people. And so the challenge is, as you bring the medicines in this country, how shall we ensure that the citizen deep in the rural areas, in the countryside, can afford these medicines? In the slums, if they get cancer, how do they afford it? And what you've done as a government, and you ask about what we shall do in terms of uh, uh, public-private partnerships, only last week we formed what we call the steering committee. I brought together uh, key multinationals, uh, key companies which are operating in this country. Companies with high turnover, with very strong financial base. And we said, you cannot, we cannot expect the government to shoulder the burden alone because we don't have the money, enough money to do so. But these are companies willing to help. So we said we shall start with about eight companies. That way we shall cascade the services right in the grassroots where it's most needed. Well done. I will, yes, sir. I will answer the question of the gentleman from Uganda on our business. So next year we will have a, be a roughly 15 billion company in sales business. While we talk mostly about healthcare, healthcare is only half of it. The other half are products in life science tools, life science materials, and in uh, performance materials. I mentioned the liquid crystals. Um, in Africa, we, will, we have built a number of offices, a number of uh, locations over the last years. We will increase those. We will also very soon, on this Friday, publish a number of how many people we would like to employ and how many sales we would like to have by uh, 2020. I would like to ask you to wait <laughs> until Friday. I can't announce it uh, today. But the two businesses where we think we can be most successful in Africa is certainly healthcare on the one hand and life science on the other end. Life science means we can support all African research laboratories to develop the highest standards, to implement the highest technologies. We can support with our products in life science the pharmaceutical production facilities in Africa, be it molecules, be it biotechnology, throughout the process of having the highest standards, the highest quality standards, we can support African authorities, be it in pharmaceutical inspection, be it in food uh, inspections, to guarantee the quality of their food. So we have a huge variety of products which can serve the uh, needs of the African markets in these two aspects. In addition, as I try to explain in my speech, we see ourselves as part of the civil society, as corporate citizen as well. So our part of our model, of our ex business model, and our model of existing as a corporation is that we will support the countries we are working in and the activities we do in this context of African luminary are part of this overall project of being not only a company which is selling product, but a company which is contributing to society, which is contributing to capacity advantage, and which is investing in countries and not only taking the sales of it. I just wanted to commend the initiatives from Kenya Infertility Society. But I have a burning issue, maybe we can get from all the panels. In Africa, I think there is uh, two issues of infertility and uh, legalizing abortion. And this is, I know there's some, some country in Africa 
where they have adopted policy of legalizing uh, abortion and abandoning infertility program. What is the comment from uh, maybe a Kenya perspective and uh, all the panels? From the Salaam because it raises moral issues, it raises ethical issues, it raises social issues, it raises psychological issues, and it raises medical issues. But I think we go back to the oath that you take when you come out of the medical school, the hypocritical oath where you uh, undertake to commit to do what is within your knowledge. So I guess, I guess the answer is there. So uh, um, uh, you to do what is within your power for the way, social well-being, psychological well-being, and uh, medical well-being. You know, probably outside that, the moral issues well, I might not be able to delve into uh, the the the, the uh, uh, moral issues or uh, the political uh, issues. Probably, I leave it to you. <laughs> Finally, Vice President. I wanted to address the question of how do programs like this benefit the poor? Yes. And uh, this is obviously a complex question, but uh, I, I just share my personal opinion uh, with you. If you look at the past 20 years in world history, despite all the problems that we're facing, poverty, disease, war, whatever, never ever in the history of mankind have more people globally been lifted out of poverty. Have, has maternal mortality been more reduced? Has child mortality been more reduced than in the past 20 years? And that, especially in Africa. China has made a big contribution uh, to this. India has actually not, interestingly. But Africa, in so many countries, if we look at the achievement of the Millennium Development Goals, Africa has made tremendous progress. I'm not saying that we don't have a lot of poverty and a lot of problems around us. But what I'm saying is, it does make sense to contribute. It does make sense to focus on this. We as a company, we started, when we became more serious about this, with a donation program. And we're trying to fight schistosomiasis, bilharzia, which is also, which is a big problem in Africa, also a very big problem in Kenya. And a, about 100,000 children die every year in Africa. And it's totally unnecessary because we have an effective cure. And it is for free because we donate it together with our partners with WHO. Sorry for being so emotional about it, but we just want to be, we want to make progress. We want to stop uh, these, unnecess these, these totally unnecessary deaths and we're very happy for African governments to prioritize that and to contribute to that. But then we also said, this is not enough. Donation programs are good, but this is not sustainable uh, uh, at the end of the day. We need to help build capacity. And this is why we're focusing on medical students, on the medical, uh, on the medical infrastructure, on the research infrastructure, and we we co we're collaborating with governments such as the government uh, uh, of Kenya on uh, on achieving progress in diabetes. Much of many cases of diabetes can be prevented through dietary changes, through other lifestyle changes, through simple awareness. Uh, the worst complications of diabetes. Uh, can be reduced by knowledge, and diabetes can be treated. Also, so we need to uh, we need to combine all of these efforts. This this event today is a small stone in this in this mosaic. So we're not claiming that this will change the world in its entirety. In its entirety, but we think if we do more of that kind, we will make the world a better place. Thank you. Thank you.